as we open up another worship experience. I want to ask if everyone will stand. Our hearts are heavy this morning. Our prayers are with Katriva Peaches Johnson's family this morning. Our heart goes out to that family. As we reflect and as we look to the help knowing that all of our help comes from the Lord please understand please hear me that nobody knows when they're when they will or how long they're want to take this opportunity as we open another worship experience but even the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour when the son of man is going to come so let me declare right now this morning that you live your life to the fullest Don't let another day go by with envy, with hatred in your heart. If there is something that you are holding on to, ask God for forgiveness and let that go. Love on your family. If you have enemies, better pray for your enemies. I'm told that this young lady, Peaches, went to lay down and never got up. Our hearts are with her, with her family. But let me admonish you that woke up this morning to give God your very best praise. Because last night, you laid in the very image of death. But the God you serve allowed you to wake up this morning. The God that you serve allowed your eyelids to wake up. The God you serve. As we pray, I want you to lift your hands all over the building. We invite the Holy Spirit in this place. God, I want you to have your way in this place right now. God, I need you to search every heart right now. In the name of Jesus. God, you know everything about us. You know what's in us. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you ease a troubling mind in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for the bereavement families now, God. We're praying for the Johnson family. We lift them up to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we know that you don't make no mistakes. But death comes when it's unexpected. God, it hurts. And we realize that it hurts. Because it's unexpected. But God, even though it's unexpected, even though it hurts, it's frustrating. There's confusion, God. Oh, why did it have to happen? God, give us the strength to be able to keep going on in the midst of death. 
your son has the keys to the grave and for that we say thank you we lift up that husband we lift up that child right now in the name of Jesus I pray your comforting arms around them now in the name of Jesus I want you to have your way in that family's life now God the name of Jesus somebody came into this building this morning with their head hanging down with their hearts heavy God I'm praying that you move right now on behalf of your people God we invite your Holy Spirit into this place and we, and we ask God that you have your way in the name of Jesus we pray against anything that is not of you God we realize that you're coming back to our church without a spot or blemish. And so God, whatever is in us that should not be, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you remove it right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray blessings on this house now. We pray blessings on the shepherd of this house, Pastor Walker. Continue to lead her and guide her, God, in the way that you have her to go. Prop her up on every leaning side now in the name of Jesus. I know that you can do anything but fail. So right now, God, we thank you for the man of God that goes to and bring the bread of life. We pray that you lift him up right now, God. Empty him now, God, but feel him now until he wants no more. Allow his word to overflow in the hearts of your people, God. Open up the minds and the hearts of these, your people, that they will receive the word of God on today, God. We thank you for pastor. We thank you for elder Michael Franklin now, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, as we go further into this service, we pray if there's anything in us that should not be, we pray that you remove it right now. Because in your word, you said that if we worship you, we must worship you in spirit and in truth. And right now, God, we just lift up holy hands and give you all of the honor. We lift up holy hands and give you all of the praise because you are truly worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are truly worthy to be praised. We thank you, God. We bless you, God. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up in this place. If we have nothing else to say, we'll just say thank you, God, for being God. Thank you, God, for being a healer. Thank you, God, for being a miracle worker. Thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. Hallelujah. This is my prayer. In the name of Jesus. Now, if you believe that God is going to turn some things around, if you know that God is getting ready to fix it, if you believe God that it's already done, come on and put your hands together. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. Give God a shout. Give God a hallelujah in this place. Turn your worship up. Come on and give it to him. He's worthy. He's worthy. to believe when I look to my right I won't see peaches in the physical anymore amen but I want you to know this morning choirs we get ready to sing I want y'all to sing because you know peaches love this choir ministry I want us to put our emotions Praise and worship is dedicated.
you with praise and worship this morning.
Glory to God. I feel God in the house today. I know we got to go on, but come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Woo! Come on, bless our God today. Glory to God. Glory. God, we thank you. Glory in this Advent season for Jesus, the baby who was born, who became a man, and who died on the cross for our sins. And because he died on the cross, we have redemption. And when we die, we don't die. We just go on to glory. We just go on to our new home. Thank God for our new home. Hallelujah. In order to get to my new home, I got to die on this side. But over in my new home, there's no more pain. There's no more suffering. And we thank God for our sister on today. She went home before me, but I give God praise today. I bless his name today, because she was ready. She was ready. God gave her time to get her life right, and that's why I give him praise today, because she didn't die on her way to hell, but she died in Jesus. Hey, my mama, see. John Sullivan Dwight, who was the editor of Dwight's Journal of Music, rewrote in English. Placide Capot, who was French, and Adolf Adam, who composed the music to the original O Holy Night. This song became very vastly known across the United States, especially in the North, because it was a song that abolitionists like Dwight himself loved to sing. A wide range of vocalists have rendered this song. It is one of the most difficult songs to sing because of its range. It ranges from low to high. And oftentimes it's very, very difficult to render. But today, 
our own sister Alice Coleman is going to give her, give us her rendition of Oh Holy Night.
Amen. If you love the Lord, put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Oh, come on, y'all can do a little bit better than that. Come on and put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. Listen. Listen. Praise team. Y'all y'all just y'all doing it. Praise team. Y'all are doing it. Praise team. Y'all are y'all killing it. Hallelujah. Listen, for those that don't know, that's how you enter into the holy of holiness. Hallelujah. Under the direction of Elder Mary and pre-elect minister Veronica. <laughs> Amen. She preach every time she get up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You heard me say minister elect Veronica. Amen. God bless you. And to the musicians, give it up for the musicians this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, it's giving time. Hallelujah. It's giving time. You ought to get happy about giving. Back to God a portion of what he has given to you. Hallelujah. I'm told that he'll give it back to you in overflow. Somebody shout overflow. Amen. 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 Anybody need some overflow? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank God for my sisters. Amen. Somebody shout overflow. Amen. Amen. Listen, during this season, during this Christmas season, we have our benevolent. Um, we're going to ask that, that if you can do, sow a seed unto the benevolent fund, you never know when it may be your time that you may need to come to us and ask for a little help. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask if you stand all over the building. Amen. So no one has to step over you. Everybody's standing. Hallelujah. And we're going to leave you in the direction of the ushers. You can give online through our get cash app. If you look at the screen, you can give through the cash app. You can give through the give a fly. Amen. You can look for the pastor's face. Amen. Amen. We thank you for every seed. We thank you for every tither. We thank you for every offering. We pray that it may be used to uplift and furthermore to your kingdom. We pray for the hand that was able to give God return unto them a hundredfold. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout overflow. Amen. 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 Good morning, New Jerusalem. 
Amen. Let's put our hands together one more time and water our seeds. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. I'm rejoicing. I'm still glad that, that I woke up this morning. Amen. Sometimes it's the little things, or we think they're little things, but that's a big thing. Amen. To just get up and wake up and have the activities of your limbs and be in your right mind. Amen. A little gas in your car, food in your pantry. Your children are doing fine. Hallelujah. Family's doing fine. Hallelujah. Amen. We are indeed grateful this morning. Amen. We are indeed grateful. Amen. And, and you know what? Even before we get started with the announcements and our welcome, I just thank God. Amen. For Katriva Peaches Johnson. Amen. She was a giver. Amen. Not just of her finance, amen, but of her time and of her talent. This should be an example to all. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen. For the life. It's not about how she died, but how did she live? Not about how she died, but how did she live? Amen. What words kept ringing in my mind last night is enter now into the joy of the Lord. Amen. 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 If she could come back, she wouldn't. Amen. Amen. We love you, Katriva Peaches Johnson. Amen. Services will follow and we will be contacting, amen, our members here. Amen. We'll let you know and update you on her services. Amen. Just give it up one more time for the life. Amen. Because we're going to celebrate. We're not having a funeral. Amen. We're going to celebrate. Amen. The life of Katriva. Amen. We called her Big Peaches. Amen. We had a little Peaches. Amen. We had so many Peaches here. Amen. We didn't know what Peaches it was. Amen. Amen. But we love you, Big Peaches. Amen. You all may be seated this morning in the house of God. Amen. Do we have any first time visitors? Amen. At the City of Peace. Any first timers here this morning? Amen. Y'all know it's going to be crunk next Sunday, so y'all be ready. Amen. And speaking of next Sunday, amen. Next Sunday is our Christmas musical service. Amen. And trust me, amen. We are going to bring it. Amen. We're all going to bring it. You're going to hear from this beautiful praise team. You're going to hear these anointed voices go forth. Amen. And last year we went viral. Amen. We're going to go viral again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for the hard work that is getting ready to be put in. Amen. We thank God for Sister Veronica Stem, Vernon Stem, Frank Williams, Amen, VJ Stem, Marcus Hale, and we thank God for the anointed singers to follow. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God in our sound and audio. Y'all know y'all show out all the time. Thank you so much for your patience. Amen. Amen. And your determination and your willingness to work with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So next week, don't forget, ugly Christmas Santa sweaters. Amen. Amen. And then we have Santa will be in the building. So y'all make sure to bring all the children out. The children will be in the sanctuary next week. They're upstairs having a great time. Hallelujah. I heard there's a large reindeer upstairs today. Amen. So don't be alarmed with the children. Amen. Amen. The children will also be coming forth with praise next week. So be ready for that. There's about 30 children that will be coming from upstairs to sing down and sing praises unto the King of Kings. Amen. So be ready. Next Sunday, 10 a.m., invite someone. And don't forget your birthday presents for Jesus. Amen. Every dollar for every year that you were born. Don't forget next week is the last week 
for the any more toy drive. Amen. You see all the toys. It's not junk in there. Everybody keeps saying, what is all that stuff? Amen. We're giving. Amen. We're giving. Come on and make sure you bring those toys. Amen. For the little tots. Amen. Next week is the last week. We'll even meet you here. I'll be here seven days this week. So if you need to call, <laughs> if you need to call me and say, hey, I'm bringing toys. I'm bringing a bike. I'm bringing this and that. We'll meet you here at the City of Peace. Amen. 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 And also, two more announcements we have. Amen. Somebody say Smart TV. Amen. If you have not bought your ticket, amen, next week we're giving away a Smart TV. Amen. The ticket donation is $10, amen, to register. Amen. Not many people have registered. So that means you have double opportunity or triple or quadruple. Amen. I will be, you know, giving a large amount because I want that TV. No. <laughs> amen. So don't forget, as you leave the facility today, stop by the welcome area, get you at least one. You never know that one ten dollars, amen, could win you that, you know, five hundred, six hundred dollar smart TV. <laughs> amen. And it's a Samsung. Amen. Just in case you want to know the brand. And don't forget New Year's Eve. Amen. December 31st, it's going down. Amen. Amen. DJ Butterfly, y'all like it when I do. She's going to be on the ones and two, twos for our New Year's Eve celebration this year. Amen. Tickets, early bird tickets will end, not today. They will end December the 15th. Is that right, Shana Vika? Yes. Okay. <laughs> They're going to end December 15th. Amen. The early bird special. I mean, we have, we're already up, I think, in our 50s as far as being open one week. Amen. So we're trying to get those tickets sold. Amen. So you, if you have not bought your ticket, make sure you get it today. Amen. 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 Let's see, new members classes. This is Pastor Walker, amen. Uh, wanted me to announce if we have any new members that have not done the new members classes, we will be starting those at the first of the year. You can see um, Evangelist Fursey, the Smith sisters, amen, to get more information, amen. Amen, almost done, I'm wrapping up. And we have a college graduate among us, amen. Amen. She has her bachelor's degree <laughs> from Austin P. State University. We want you to stand at this time. You guys find a way to bless her. Amen. We'll be selling, celebrating our graduates. Amen. In May, all together for the physical year. Amen. But we want you to know that this young lady, Raven Gray, has graduated from college. Give it up. Amen. Hallelujah. You go, girl. Hallelujah. Amen. Looks like we're going to have several college graduates this year. Amen. Changing hearts, shaping lives for real. <laughs> amen. And also immediately after morning services, amen, we're going to meet with all team leaders. Amen. Briefly, team leaders and Trenice, amen, and Brother Kivas, he'll be coming in. So, as we wrap everything up this morning, amen. Are y'all ready for a word? We're going to do your tickets while, while, we're, while we're introducing what we're going to do. Amen. Are y'all ready? Amen. amen. This is week three, amen, of Christmas at the movies. And before we get started, and I tell you, well, you already know now. What Christmas movie we're doing? Let me get a jump roll. Let's see who's going to the movies this week. <laughs> get your tickets out. You should have your tickets. Every Sunday, make sure you get a ticket. I didn't either. The winning ticket is last four digits zero eight three six zero eight three six
six. Are you? Did you win? You win every time. No. <laughs> You're, look at her. You better shout. Give me that shout music. Hey, hey. <laughs> Congratulations. She really is the winner. <laughs> Don't be a hater all your life. Come on, clap it up for the sister. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just one. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Kirby. You look so nice in your Tennessee Titans outfit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we're in week three, amen, of our Christmas sermon series. Amen. So what are we going to be talking about today? What movie? Amen. A Charlie Brown Christmas. As y'all can see, an NJ5 joint. That's the Spike Lee in me. By Minister Mike. Amen. Anyway, can I get a little bit of that Charlie Brown music? Do y'all remember that? They were jamming. All right. <laughs> I see you getting down, uh, Sister Marilyn. No. <laughs> uh, you're getting down. So as we prepare, oh, you can keep it going. A Charlie Brown Christmas. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Amen. It started in 1965. It was an animated television special. It was the first TV special based on the comic strip. You guys know the comic strip. Peanuts. Amen. By Charles M. Schultz. Amen. And, and on December 9th, 1965, the Charlie Brown special came, came out. He found himself depressed on the show. Amen. At such a cheerful time of the year. And so Lucy had an idea. Charlie Brown, why don't you direct a Christmas play? But his efforts were, of course, ignored and mocked by his peers. Do y'all remember one of the things that was mocked? That raggedy Christmas tree. Amen, the Christmas tree is still alive. Amen, it's on Revere Road. Amen. <laughs> it's my aunt's Christmas tree. <laughs> oh yeah, I had to get you. <laughs> I despise your Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, there was only one smart fellow in the whole entire Amen movie. His name was Linus. Sean, uh, in, in honor of Linus, Shanavika brought her blanket to church service today. I guess that is that your favorite character? Amen. So we thank God for the spirit of Linus this morning. Amen. So what we're going to do. We are going to make way this morning for the man of the hour. Amen. He will come in his own way. A Charlie Brown Christmas. Everyone give it up all over the building. Amen. He needs no introduction. Elder Michael James Franklin. I may be seated. I thought she was going to preach my word for me. I was like, okay. <laughs> Amen. If y'all have looked at Facebook, I'm pretty sure everybody knows the, does everybody know the title of the lesson? Nope. <laughs> no. All right, fellas, play the, play the clip and then we'll get into it. Amen. It. He's got it with him outside in the snow and inside during rehearsals for the Christmas play. Linus, you've got to get rid of that stupid blanket. He's quite clearly attached to the thing, perhaps a little too attached. Blame Linus for not wanting to let the blanket go. It appears to be made of 100% pure magic. 
it gets dragged through the snow all day without getting soggy, and even serves as a remarkably accurate slingshot. Wait, did he just ice skate with his security blanket in his hand? And now, this is happening. Later on, Lucy tries to get him to put down the blanket so that he can dress up like a shepherd for the Christmas play. That's when Linus reveals that the blanket can shapeshift, forming a perfect headdress complete with a band in the middle. Who manufactures this Swiss Army security blanket? We simply must have one. <laughs> Amen. I have a gift for anybody. I'm gonna show, let me show you the gift. It's for, it's for a man or maybe for a woman. <laughs> See, I've been asking for it, so I said it, it, it's Christmas time. See, the, it's Christmas time, and it's been Thanksgiving, and the, and the kid has been eating a little bit too much. <laughs> So, we have a, a prize for anybody who can tell me before I even start preaching. Y'all looked at it. For anybody who can tell me what the blanket is. Oh. Oh. Y'all look close. Oh, it, it, it's, it's so simple that it's hard. I'll give, I'll give y'all. No. They're all, it's all, it's all wrapping up into one. It's one thing that we all supposed to have. Who said faith? <laughs> Come on, Peach. See, all of us are supposed to carry this thing around. <laughs> now you see why he carried it around everywhere he went. You're supposed to carry around faith everywhere you go. Oh, and today of all days. <laughs> Whew. It's a hard day. Whew, but you got to have this to show up. To get up out of your bed, you have to have faith to get out of the bed. And not only is it faith, you got to have belief to get out of the bed. Oh, because there's some hard situations. Mm, mm -mm. So the title of the sermon today is, and I say this to all of you, all of you may be going through something, bereavement, death, hard times, challenges, injuries, death. Lord, help me. <laughs> don't put it down. <laughs> oh, you don't get it. Don't ever put your faith down. See, if you look in the clip, old Lucy tried to keep on making Linus put his blanket down. <laughs> Oh, she, she threatened him, made a fist at him, said, what are you going to do when you grow up? Oh, what happens when some of us grow up? When some of us grow up, we put our faith down. Oh, but who are the children? I'm speaking to the children today. Don't ever put your faith down. Oh, people might talk about you. You might be a little bit different, but you carry your faith around. Oh, when you go to school, take faith with you. When you get out of the bed, take faith with you. When you take a test, take faith with you. When you get on the bus, take faith with you. Hey, because I'm going to tell you, this world will try to make you put your faith down. But I'm telling you today, don't ever put it down. Put it down. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to keep the faith. I know it's hard to believe in troubling times. But this is the word, hey, for such a time as this. Oh, I hate to say it, but faith got me up here this morning. Faith made me drive over to somebody's house and show up because I sure didn't want to. Let me tell you something. Death scares you. But faith and believe will make you walk on, not for yourself, but show faith for somebody else. Show belief for somebody else. Show courage for somebody else. Stand for somebody else. Stand up when somebody else feels like falling. Stand up and hold somebody when their wife passed away. That's faith. Some of you talk about faith. Some of you talk about faith. But in some times, you put your faith down. Hmm. Throw up the scriptures, fellas. Ephesians 6 and 16. Talking about the armor of God. <laughs> but we're talking about one particular piece that says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. <laughs> That's that blanket. <laughs> I said, in all circumstances. Somebody says, in all. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Mm, 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 mm. Throw up the second one, fellas. Galatians 3, 26 through 27. Okay. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You may be seated. Hey man, I got four points and we're going to get out of here. My first point is, what I told you is, don't put it down. And as we gather today and as already somebody already won is, don't put what down? Don't put your faith down. Faith and your belief in God is the blanket. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Faith and belief in God is your blanket. <laughs> Those are the two things that you must have and never lose. Faith and belief. But I have a question today. Can people see your blanket? Mm, 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 mm. Did you hear what I said? I said, can people see your blanket? Can people see your faith? Can people see your belief? See, because Linus carried his around where you can what? See it. Everybody could see it. See, they just thought he was carrying around this a normal old blanket. But oh, what well, he had something that none of them had. <laughs> he had. Let me tell you something. When you have faith and belief in this world, you have something that some people never have. And you're supposed to carry that thing around. You're supposed to carry it around. <laughs> so that lets me know that faith and belief can be warm. <laughs> People are supposed to see your faith. Supposed to see your belief. Can I see your faith? Oh, it's just like the coat of many colors. Some of you say, favor <laughs> ain't fair. But you can't have favor if you don't have faith. 
Or some of you want the things of God, but you ain't even got the faith and you sure enough don't believe. You done already put your blanket down. That tells me that your faith and belief should be worn. You got to wear this thing around, just like I said, in troubling times. Somebody say, in troubling times. Can I? Can we? Can your loved ones? Can your friends? Can your family? Can they see your blanket? Don't let me get ahead of myself. Point number two. We're going to talk about some of the characters in the movie. Some of us might fit into these particular characters. Amen. They say the star of the movie is Charlie Brown. (laughs) <laughs> they call Charlie Brown the lovable loser. Mm-mm-mm. Did you hear what I said? They, he's supposed to be the star. They call Charlie Brown the lovable loser. How many of us, truth be told, fit that category? Can I, can I be honest with you today? I do not like No losers. I don't hang around no losers. Oh, I I know it don't sound Christian, but look, I don't like hanging around somebody who is a woe is me. Oh, poor me. Oh, God, me. Oh, God, why me? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let me tell you something about Charlie Brown. If something... It's bad. Charlie Brown's going to find him. I don't care if everything's going good. Charlie Brown's going to find the bad in any situation. He always finds the bad. He don't ever look for the silver lining. He always looks for the woe is me. Is that you today? Are you Charlie Brown? You can get some good news, get a good report. You hear one bad thing and you put your blanket down. Oh, my God. I don't like no lovable loser. God told me I'm more than a conqueror. I'm victorious. I'm the head and not the tail. I don't care if I look defeated. Guess what? I'm still a winner. I don't care if I lose, I lose, I lose. I'm broke as a joke. I still feel like I'm rich because I still got faith and believe that in a second, in an hour, In the twinkling of an eye, all things can be changed. I keep my blanket on. I keep my faith on. I ain't no loser. Who am I speaking to today? Charlie Brown? Oh, I know some Charlie Brown. But I'm here today to what? Speak faith to encourage you to pick your blanket back up and put it on. Character number two. Good old Lucy. (laughs) Good old Lucy. It's said it Yelling at Charlie Brown. Cussing it. No, he don't, she don't cuss it. She feel like she's cussing at him. She talked to him so bad that she might as well be cussing. <laughs> you, see, you seen in the clip, she said, take that blanket off. What are you going to do when it's time for you to go on stage? He said, I didn't, you can't get the clip. He said, why should I take the blanket off? Lucy told him, I got five reasons. (laughs) One, two, three, four, five. Take that blanket off. (laughs) She finna whoop Charlie Brown to take his faith off. Mm, 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 mm. I call Lucy an opportunist. Because if you ever watched the movie, she had her little booth set up. 
Said she was a psychiatrist. <laughs> she said she was a psychiatrist, but, but this is the thing. This is why I say Lucy was an opportunist. She charged you five cents for some information. Don't you know people will charge you whenever you're going through something hard? Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't with me. Hey, some people just sitting in the cut waiting and ready to charge you whenever you're going through something. I call it an opportunity. Sometimes when you're going through, that person never talked to you. They go like this, hey. Hey, opportunists can be men and opportunists can be women. And this is the thing. This is why I say she was an opportunist. She said, Charlie Brown. What might be, what's, what's, what's your problem? Do you have cat phobia? He said, no. Do you have fear of this, fear of that, fear of that, fear of this, fear of that, fear of this? Don't you know people will speak fear into your life? People will speak bad things into your life just because they want something from you. I call it an opportunity. You know what gave it away? She was an opportunist. Charlie Brown was sitting there talking. Soon as he put the five cents in the thing, she started shaking the money. She said, ooh, that money sounds so good. She don't care about the problem. All she care about is the money. As they, do I have any Lucy's in here? All they hear is the jingling, Opportunity. <laughs> hmm. Moving on to character number three, Snoopy. How many of y'all like Snoopy? Not too many fans of Snoopy? You like Snoopy? Raise your hand if you like Snoopy. Okay. <laughs> oh, Snoopy. Oh, Snoopy's a cool cat, ain't he? Hey, Snoopy know how to do everything. (laughs) Snoopy this cool cat, man. (laughs) I used to like Snoopy. Did you hear, Pat? Did you hear what I said? I used to like Snoopy until I watched Snoopy. See, Charlie Brown, Snoopy was supposed to be Charlie Brown's best friend. Snoopy was supposed to be Charlie Brown's best friend. But every time I see Snoopy, every time I see Charlie Brown going through something, Snoopy is always laughing. You supposed to be my dog. You supposed to be my partner. But every time I go through something, you seem to be laughing. How are you supposed to be my friend? Matter of fact, Snoopy always encourages Charlie Brown to put his blanket down. Right, Linus, my bad. Let me give you a word, a nugget today. If your best friend is always making you put your faith and your belief down, exactly, you put them down. <laughs> Number four, O Schroeder. Schroeder's the keyboard player. Let me tell you, you got to watch people like Schroeder. Because the only thing Schroeder care about is playing that keyboard. And the funny thing is, he played the same song every time. If he's sad, he played the same song. If he's happy, he played the song. If he's in church, he played the same song. Din, 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 din. All of them going like this. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> then that one go like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about you, Vernon. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about the musicians. Let me tell you about. <laughs> let me tell you about Schroders. 
Schroders are people who let their hobbies. Let their hobbies or what they do from a living put their faith down. Oh, if you love playing that keyboard more than you love God, don't mean nothing. If you love playing football more than you love God, it don't mean nothing. If you love basketball more than you love God, it means nothing. Because you want to know why. God is the one who made you. God is the one who gave you the ability. God is the one who even showed you to have a dream to play anything. So how are you going to love a thing more than you love God? Where is your faith and where is your, what are you putting in? Too many of us put our faith and belief in what we can do. Mike, you are preaching. Character number five. Oh, this is going to be a rough one. Character number five is old filthy, dirty, nasty pig pen. Everywhere he walked, dirt sort of follow. Dirt just all around him. Pig pen is just a filthy cat. Everywhere he go, dirt just come around. Do I have any pig pens in the house? Does your sin, does the way you live your life, does it follow you all around? Let me tell you something. You can wear sin. You can wear filth. Hey, people can see filth. Let me tell you something. You always, hey, the world is always worried about snitches. Did you hear what I said? People are always worried about snitches. Somebody telling on you, can I drop a nugget on you? And some of us ain't going to like it. Hey, I didn't like it when it happened to me, but I'm just going to try to share something with you to save you some trouble and sorrow. Let me tell you something. They didn't tell on you. Your nasty life spoke for your... (laughs) Your nasty life told on you. Ain't nobody had to tell on you. Everybody know who you are. Everybody know what you do. Hey, ain't nobody got to say it. Your life showed You just filthy. You just an old down dirty dog. And you know what they say about dogs, don't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, see, that's the problem. Some of you women like that old dirty and filthy joker walking around. You like that old dirty and nasty dog without a flea. But can I tell you about a dog? A dog will hump anything. A dog will hump on your leg. A dog will hump on your couches. A dog will hump anything. Mike, don't be no player hater. I ain't got to play hate. Your life speaks for you. <laughs> hey, I was a dog. And guess what? My life and all that filth followed me around. Ain't nobody had to tell you. <laughs> Amen. And to the real main character, to the, did I say to the real main character of the movie, is my boy Linus. Oh, he seemed like the oddball. He seemed like the little nerd. He seemed like the little sissy. But Linus is the only one out of everybody in the movie who had something that the other ones didn't have. He's the only one that has something that all of the other ones didn't have. And he would not. Oh, I said he would not. He could not put it down. If he was playing outside, he had it on. <laughs> he was 
win. He had it on. Hey, when you're playing football, keep faith and believe on. When you're playing basketball, keep faith and believe on. When you're driving in your car, keep faith and believe on. I'm telling you, I'm telling me, don't put it down. Brings me to my third point. I'm almost done. My third point is people in life will try to put your faith down. Some people try to make you put your faith and belief down. This world, this TV, will make you put your faith and belief down. Easy. Will make you put it down. Things. Mm. Let me get a little noise on things. Things. There we go. I felt to hit that one more time so I can move on there. So you got to do your head like that. Huh? I said, thing will make you put your faith and believe down. A big old shiny Benz will make you put your faith and believe down. Oh, a little platinum and gold chain will make you put your faith and belief down. A little bit of money will make you put your faith and your belief down. I said things will make you put your faith down. How many of today has let things make us put our faith down? When you ain't got no money, when you ain't got no job, will you do what you got to do to pay the bills? I said faith and things will make you put your faith down. When you ain't got no money to buy your kids no Christmas present, will you give in to things before you give in to faith? Will you trust God? Will you hold on to faith when you ain't got no money to buy no presents? When you ain't got no gas to put in your car? When you ain't got no money to pay your life bill, will you do what the world tell you to do or will you hold on to your blanket? Will you hold on to it or will you put it down? Life situations will make you put your faith down. I said life. Life. Life will make... Ooh. Will make you put your faith. It will try to make. Let me let me let me fix that up. Will try to make you put your faith in belief down. Let me tell you some things that make you want to put it down. Sickness. Oh, sickness. When people are sick, it makes you want to put your faith down. <laughs> When you go to the doctor and he tell you you got cancer, that you're sick, that you got this and that, it make you want to put your faith and your belief down. And the first thing you do is ask is, why me, Charlie Brown? Mm -mm -mm. Another thing that make us put our faith down. Injuries will make us put our faith down. Oh, when you get hurt. When your body get hurt, when your leg get hurt, when your arm get hurt, when anything on your body get hurt and you can't do what you used to do, you want to put your faith and belief down. Hmm. Yeah, you want to put it down. Because it's hard. Charlie Brown, why me? Death will make you want to put your faith and belief on down. 
God, how are you going to take my mama? God, oh God, how are you going to take my father? God, oh God, how are you going to take my child? How are you going to take my sister? How are you going to take my brother? Oh, death, how are you going to take away my loved ones from me? Death will make you put your faith and belief down. But I'm here to tell you, don't put your faith down. Oh, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know life got a way of knocking the life out of you, but don't put it down. Matter of fact, you'll learn from people who went through something. The only thing, I said the only thing that got them through was their faith. And believe. Because the Bible says when you hold on to God's unchanging hand, He will bring you out. I said when you hold on to God's unchanging hand, when God lays out the blanket, all you got to do is grab on to it. And you know the good thing about it is the blanket's long, so you ain't got to hold it up. You can just drag it and hold on and God will drag you through. Hey, you ain't gonna wait. Hey, you ain't always gonna walk. Hey, you might be bent down. You might be bent down, but just keep holding on to the blanket. Keep holding on to the faith. Keep holding on to your belief. Oh, I know it gets hard sometimes and your hand just drops. And sometimes you just bow down and you fall You ain't got nothing. I said you ain't got nothing. Oh God, I ain't got nothing left. I can't go through this. I can't take this. But God being so good. You have another opportunity my God, my God. if you won't give up. My God. And all you got to do is after you had your little pity party, after all your white guys and crying, yes. all you got to do is stick your hand back out. Oh, you might not get up fast in another one. Hey, you can even crawl holding on to faith. You can even crawl holding on to belief. Hey, you can stop sometime. But you keep on going. You keep on holding on to that faith. Oh, you might crawl. You might jump back, bend over. But faith and belief in God will. I said it will. It has to. It will lift you back up. Throw Romans 8, 8 and 38 and 39 up there. Everything I just talked about is right in these verses. Say, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present are things to come. Hey, there's some things coming your way. Hey, there's some things coming your way. I'm going to move on. Nor height, nor death, nor any creature. I said any creature. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work on I said any creature. I said any creature. The devil is going to try to pop up in your situation. But you got to say, not no devil, not no person, not no thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. I need somebody to say, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. Hey, I need everybody to say, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. 
I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how tough it is. I said I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. That's what it comes down to. This life, this world, this devil wants to separate you from your faith and belief. You need to put that scripture in your heart. Hey, you need to wear that. You need to wear that. I let nothing. And I'm going to close it up now. But I'm going to show you the only time I'm going to show you the only time you put your faith and belief down. Go on and play the last clip, fella. Pay close attention. Praise God. Go back, guy. 124. Praising God. Go back a little bit more. Glory to God. And suddenly there was with the angel more. a multitude. You shall find the babe wrapped. Let's keep on going back before you can get on the stage. Did y'all play close attention? I said there's only one time. Build it up, fellas. (laughs) There's only one time. (laughs) Go a little bit high. I said there's only one time. Put your faith and belief down. I said there's only one time that you put your faith and belief down. I don't know if you caught it in the thing, but he he laid it down when he got up there. He walked up there with it. Hey, faith and belief will make you walk up on the stage in front of a million people. Faith and belief will make you walk in front of people that hate your gut. Faith and belief will carry you to do great things. But the only time you put your faith and belief down is when you share it and give it to somebody else. He only put his faith and belief down when he told them about the one who gave him the faith and the belief. When you give somebody your faith, when you give somebody your belief, You ain't doing nothing but giving them God. That's the only time you put your faith and belief down was when you give it to somebody else. When you tell somebody else to have faith, when you tell somebody to believe in this Savior, when you tell somebody about the one who died for you, when you tell somebody when that one they rose up on the third day with all power in his hands, who took the keys to life and death, who loved you even when you were yet sinners, you don't ever put it down until you tell somebody about God, until you tell somebody about Jesus. Whenever you take your jacket off, whenever you take your blanket off, and give it to somebody else. It should be the only time you set it down. My question to you today is, will you give your blanket to somebody else? Oh, when they going through, will you give them your blanket? Or do you just hold on to your blanket and never pass it on? And I'm closing. Y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. I want y'all to be honest and tell the truth. See, this word that I spoke, I'm going through. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. (laughs) 
I want you to be honest with yourself today and I want you to tell the truth. <clears throat> Have you put your faith there? <laughs> Have you put your faith there? <clears throat> now don't be too proud. Don't ever be too proud, proud or act fake or phony. Just because you step in. See, that's the problem with church. David said so eloquently. That's the problem with church. Everybody walk out here and want to put on the front and fake like you ain't going through something. I need some people, to be honest, and stand. If you put your faith down. And I don't do this much. But I want to pray for you if you put your faith down. Because God is telling me a lot of us have put our faith and belief down. So this is your opportunity to pick it back up again. That's why I said such a time such as this. Pick your blanket and your faith back up. And you can't live off your mama and daddy faith. You can't live off your grandparents' faith and belief. You can't live off anybody else's faith and belief but your own. But the good thing is I want to tell you is if you listen to Wednesday night, yeah, favor. Favor ain't fair. And the reason why some of us are where we are today is all because of the favor of your parents or somebody else who had favor. That's the only reason why you even maintain it. But I want you to have favor and faith and belief for yourself. Because late in the midnight hour, oh, when ain't nobody else there, when you're laying in your bed and you're crying your eyes out, ain't nobody else there but you. Grandma ain't there. Mama ain't there. Friends ain't there. The only one there is God. But you got to believe that he's there. Amen. If you're contemplating, amen, putting your blanket down, I want you to just come up here to the altar. Amen. Just come up to the altar. Amen. We want to pray for you this morning. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. There's a couple of people in here. Hallelujah. Don't be ashamed. We'll even come to your seat if you want to raise your hand right where you are. Amen. You need prayer for such a time as this. Hallelujah. God sees you. God sees you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, to Jesus. If you need a blanket this morning, oh, now is the time to heal my freely give. I will ever love. If you don't know Jesus and trust him, get to know him today. Tomorrow's not His promised, nor is today promised. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Thank you, God.
Amen. Would you put your hands together for this awesome word? Amen. Hallelujah. You know what the Lord said to me? Just in case you're too proud to get up, amen, right where you are, you tell the Lord, I have sinned against thee and thee alone. Renew in me the right spirit, amen. Create in me a clean heart. Return unto me the joy of my salvation, amen. You can pray that to the Lord, amen, and start over, amen. Get back up again. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. Amen, awesome word, amen, Elder Franklin. Amen, praise the Lord, amen. Amen, hallelujah. If you've ever felt like that, amen, hallelujah, amen, amen, just repent and keep on going, amen, amen, hallelujah. Would you stand at this time? And I believe Mary is meeting with um, the team leaders, all team leaders, amen, praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah. Next Sunday, I would that you would not forget your birthday gift for Jesus, that's a dollar for every year that God has allowed you to live. Amen. And please don't forget your tithe and offering. Amen. Because we want to celebrate Jesus' birthday right. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. That's a sacrificial offering. Amen. What can I render unto the Lord for all he's done for me? Amen. Praise God. It's good to have Tim Boss Bell in the house again. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We praise God for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Walter McKinney, please see us after service. Amen. We want to say happy birthday to you. Amen. Janine Ellison. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. And, and Nyla Medley. Amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please don't forget. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give glory to God. Thank you, Mother Mercy. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads for the closing prayer. God, our Father, we thank you right now for every word that has been spoken over our life right now in the name of Jesus. God, we receive it, we believe it, and we know that we can have it right now. And God, we just pray for the ones that have, have, have not made the decision, amen, to accept faith and not reject it right now. And God, we lift them up before you right now in the name of Jesus, God. We pray for the ones that are on live with us right now. And God, we ask that they would look up to their faith and lift it up right now. Because we put on faith, we put on Jesus right now. We have put on Christ Jesus right now. And the world for such a time as this is looking for a Savior that they can believe in. And God, let it begin in us and with us and be all over us right now. In the name of Jesus, God. And God, we thank you for Elder Mike, amen, who has spoken this word that you have given him in clarity right now. He made it so plain that even a fool couldn't hear. Amen. Thank you, Ma, for those words right now. In the name of Jesus, God. God, we're getting ready to leave this place, but never from your presence. Send your angels, surely, goodness and mercy to watch over us. In Jesus' great big name we pray. Amen. Amen. Depart and serve.